Jack Reacher. I mean, to get back into that a little bit. I mean, that's yeah. that's a big, you know, it's Tom Cruise big time movie blockbuster and then they're doing a series how many auditions did you go on how many times did you meet with these producers for this role yeah you know there's always going to be a chip on my shoulder for this because uh <laughs> you know i'm also i'm just always going to feel like i have something to prove no matter how many times yeah i just went to dinner with a lot of people involved with the show and they were like thanking me because it just shows you know it's not out yet i mean well, i don't know when this will air but you know when we're talking about this right now, it's not out yet. But when does it come out on Amazon? February fourth. So, um, so it's being seen by some people, media, you know, industry insiders, test audience, and it's like everybody loves it. You know, people that have read the books, people that haven't, everybody's enjoying it. So, like, thank you for all your hard work and what you've done. And if it, if you know, if you didn't work as Reacher, this whole thing wouldn't work. But it worked. And I, you know, and I think back to my uh, my time during the process. They passed on me the first time. And they passed on everybody the first time, you know, but, um, you know, I've put, I put a tape together, you know, I was approached about this as was probably 2000 other guys. And, um, and I, you know, I put a tape together, but the, the sides that they gave us were probably not the most conducive to an audition because it was all about capturing that stoic, you know, Reacher said nothing is something sort of famously involved in every book. Right. Reacher said nothing. And the sides were basically Reacher said nothing. So there's like an interrogation where he's just sitting there the whole time. And I was like, I don't know how to play this. But in my mind, I was like, I have to, you know, it's got to have some energy. And so I was channeling, you know, the guy from Waterworld who's like, give me the paper, give me the paper, give it a girl, give it a paper. He's trying to trade the girl, paper for the goods. <laughs> give it a paper, give it a paper. Give it a... Kevin Costner's like, all right, don't put the knife down. You know? <laughs> I was like trying to channel that guy. Like, give me the paper. Give me the paper guy. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in my mind. I'm like listening, you know, think, imagining this guy trying to just generate some inner. Something. Inner, yeah. And uh, and they hated it. <laughs> they hated it. <laughs> yeah, they hated so it. So they course. just said, okay, no, pass. <laughs> no, I went to, you know, the tape went to producer. I got a call that, you know, they, you know, it was, it was interesting. They, they sent it to producers and then it just never went further. And like months go by and like, you know, I've been doing this a long time. You hold very loosely to this stuff. Like, Oh, love the idea of that that'd be cool. And then nothing happens. You're like, okay. And that wasn't meant, that was meant for somebody else. And it was sort of that. It was just like, all right, I guess meant for somebody else. And then like, I don't know, four or five months after that, I get a call that like, they're thinking about the redo it, you know, sort of coming, circling back. Um, new casting director, whole new sides they're re kind of reimagining this the process wow. and so they were like i was like oh i get a second chance and so minnie Marin, who who cast uh who cast the show she's a phenomenal casting director she had gone back to look at the tapes after they reimagined how to approach finding this guy and looked at the tapes that had gone to producers so like thank god they sent it to producers that time because i never would have been seen again um and uh she saw your saw tape. something saw something and i think with some adjustment you know i think with some adjustment we could, you know, get this to work. But I, when I saw the new sides, I was like, oh, this I can do, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it was probably seven or eight other auditions. It's just seven kind of, or eight <clears throat> other auditions. There are so many cooks in the kitchen in a, in a good way. Like not in a bad, I mean, there's so many people who have a vested interest in delivering something that works to the fans as they should, you know, it's a lot of people taking this very seriously and want to make sure that they get it right. And, you know, some, I, I only owe Mr. Cruz a debt of gratitude for the visibility that he's brought to this role. But there are people who comment on the fact that he's not exactly the size that Reacher should be. And that's a large character in this, or it's its own kind of character in this. Um, Cause you're a so, bigger guy than Cruz. <clears throat> And that's true. That's true. But, um, you know, and it, you know, suffice it to, to say that he, he also still carried those franchises into the hundreds of millions of dollars without that. So that's a testament to him and his, his talent and craft. And right. he's incredible. Um, um, but you know, a lot of fans, um, weren't, weren't happy. And, um, and so, you know, there's obviously probably a level of anxiety from the executives going like, we don't want to mess this up again. And so there's a lot of that energy, uh, coming, coming at these, these auditions, you know, um, sort of a, a, a little bit of trepidation and uh it you know it, it it kept going but it was like well now we want you to read for you know the amazon exec the skydance exec this exec that exec were you getting meeting frustrated? people along the way no not at all it was like okay as long as this is happening as long as this conversation is happening like then this is still good you know and it's just another opportunity for me to win somebody over this is the job you know i right. mean you know how it is like I think as soon as you get cynical, I was, there was a point in my life where I was like very cynical. I came off a comedy 
And uh, I felt like, I mean, if it, you know, they should be throwing rolls at me. <laughs> like, look what I just did on this show that nobody saw. Delusions of grandeur. Delusions of grandeur. <clears throat> and I was like frustrated that like, you know, there weren't just like 50 film offers, you know. It was, and it, you know, I got very bitter for a little bit until I had this, um, this uh, perspective shift, you know, um, through the loss of a role. But, uh, um, you know, so it just, I, I was up for it. I was up for it as long as it was working and it was, you know, um, but it was, it took a lot of educating um, uh, Amazon on who I, you know, who I, who I am. And, and then there was also a lot of questions about height because this is during the pandemic. So we can't do this stuff in person. And in fact, they flew me out once to, to test in person. And, uh, and, and I get to the hotel in LA and they're like, they're going to have to take a blood sample. This is like before, you know, the, right. the swabs that we have now. And they're like, they're going to have to take a blood sample. And I was like, blood sample. I'm like, this is serious. Like, this is what kind of Jesus world are we like, really got to bleed for your craft these days? <laughs> yes. I guess that's the world. We, and I was fine with it. I was like, all right, no, it's fine. And they're like, all right, they're talking to lawyers about it, seeing, you know, how that whole thing works. And I guess eventually they got cold feet about taking blood to, you know, to secure a test audition. Um, and so I went back and we did it over Zoom. But, uh, you know, I wasn't seeing these people in person. And that's a big part of this, you know, knowing you can feel somebody's energy and their presence and see their size. Sure. And that's so, so they, they actually had me measure myself on tape, you know, like head to toe and my, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do it. So I had my kids on a step stool and they're up there like measuring, like strip down to your shorts and bare feet, show us exactly where that tape is. We want to see how big you they are. They saw you without a shirt on and all that <clears throat> oh, stuff. Oh yeah. 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 Um, uh, you know, so there was just, it was a lot of that. It was a big process of like all and the you stuff were in that, really good shape at this time well i was uh <clears throat> yeah i was i walk around at like you know if i'm not working out i run a lot and i, I walk around at like 205 which is like still big for a lot of people right um and uh 205 i, I think if, i thought you'd be bigger than that well i am now oh I you mean, are <clears throat> yeah i'm 235 oh okay yeah, i was like jesus christ yeah that's I'm, a, yeah. I'm 185 i'm like hey, you know what bigger than i am <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I put, I put on, uh, I put on about 30 pounds for this, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, I wasn't at the time, you know, I wasn't that big, of that. but, uh, you know, I still, I'm just a large guy, you know, guy. So I'm a large it, man. It was just, um, anyway, but it just, uh, it, 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 it was a process and, um, and, uh, they were convinced that, um, you know, I was, I guess I was the right guy. So there was a lot of, there was a lot of apprehension when the, the executives producer started showing up in prep when I was actually there. Cause I was like, now they're going to see me in person for the first time. I hope I'm big enough. <laughs> and you were. And I think, thank God. Yeah. I didn't well, get fired. didn't get fired. Here's a serious <clears throat> question. Yeah. How honestly, how demanding was the shoot? That's a good question. I mean, you filmed this entire 10 episode series. You did 10 episodes for this Amazon series, Jack Reacher, which comes out February 4th. The demand on your body and your mind. I mean, you just talked about in your mid thirties overcoming, you know, deep depression and figuring out you have bipolar, getting on meds, getting healthier, finding purpose. You book this part. I guess it's the right time because you're now on the up. What are you going through? <clears throat> That's a good question. Um, I think, I think, uh, you know, and also for anybody watching who maybe is struggling with a lot of that stuff, bringing all that stuff to the light can only help. You know, I feel like we live in a world where it's, you know, I'm trying to destigmatize, normalize these conversations so, so we could just, let's just get it all. Let's talk about it. You let's know, talk this about is, it. this is only, it can only help to talk about it. But I, you know, like I had an assistant on the show and she's well aware of all of that, you know? And so it was like, help me pay attention to you. Cause it's hard for me to see those changes, you know, um, you know, am I, am I, how am I doing mentally? You know, like, and, and, you know, and she's like, if, uh, if you need to slow down, like, let's just slow down at any time. Of course I never said I needed to, but, um, but you should have, but you can't, you know I mean? That's, you know, there's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so the toughest thing, I don't ever want to complain about, I have nothing to complain about. I live a, priv a privileged life and, uh, I've, I've always, I'm living the dream that I, I, I've worked for, you know, I mean, it's a dream come true. You know, what I do for a living, I enjoy, um, it challenges me. It keeps me, it holds my interest. Nothing else can do, you know, I'm just, I get bored easily. So I love what I do. I don't want to complain, but it was the most challenging shoot I've ever had to endure. And it just about killed me. 
Really? And I do, yes. And I do, I mean that, I mean that I'm going to, you're, you're going to get some info that no, no other, I haven't given any other media or whatever, but I'll just get into it with you. Cause I've, 